If you're in full-time employment and you're thinking about starting your very own car cleaning business as a side hustle, then you're in the right place because I'm going to tell you some of the reasons why I truly believe right now is the very best time to start your own car cleaning business. And no, we're not actually talking about full-time here. We're talking about part-time. And there is a very good reason why we're saying part-time only here because I'm sure that there's a lot of you who are already in full-time employment. You may love cleaning your car, but you're just not quite confident enough to go out there and start your own business. There's a lot that you need to learn before you even jump into that. So this video is gonna hopefully give you a bit more confidence and by sharing some of my stories along the way, you should be able to get a rough idea on how to carry this out yourself if you wanna go out there and make some extra money. So if you're somebody who's thinking about starting a car cleaning business, then the best time to do it is really in between March and September, end of September. That's what I like to call car cleaning season. You get brand new cars coming out, new number plates, you have better weather, longer daylight hours, people have more confidence because they look at the weather and they say, yes, the next seven days, we're gonna be able to get our car cleaned and it's gonna stay clean because we haven't got rain, we haven't got snow, we haven't got sludge to worry about. So there's so many great reasons why you should start a business right now. And I wanna go through some of the things that I've made notes on on this bit of paper here. So honestly, if you are somebody who's thinking of starting a part-time business, it's actually a better idea than starting a full-time business right now. And there is a very good reason why I'm saying this because honestly, right now things are very difficult for a lot of people. We have a very unpredictable market that we're in. Detailing can go real sky high one minute. The next minute, if you're full-time, you'll probably know about this if you're self-employed. The next minute, it will come crashing down and you can have weeks where it's completely dead. So I'm gonna give you a quick brief story as to how I got off the ground. So I was 18 years old, I was working in a nursing home and I did that full-time for three years. But in between that three years, I was cleaning the chef's cars, the nurse's cars, the gardener's cars, the staff's cars. I didn't even have a driving license at the time. I literally said to them, can I clean your car? I did five pound wash, 10 pounds in and out. And I had no knowledge, no experience. We didn't have YouTube, we didn't have social media or the internet. We had nowhere where I could have learned this apart from a library, which finding a car cleaning book in a library was pretty difficult. And the thing is, because I was already in a full-time job and I had staff around me who wanted to get their car cleaned, it gave me this platform where I could go out and earn a couple of extra quid here and there. And because we had those longer daylight hours, it meant I could do my full-time job. And then afterwards, I can go out and earn a little bit of extra money and gain some experience along the way. And by the way, cleaning your own car is completely different to cleaning somebody else's. You may enjoy cleaning your own one because you get this self-satisfaction. You get this pride of, yes, I've achieved something. And you get to experience it and enjoy it afterwards. When you clean somebody else's vehicle, like a customer's, you clean it, you take your money, and you go, you're done. Now you still have a little bit of pride, but you don't have that satisfaction of seeing it constantly going, yes, I've done that, and you get to see it every day. You almost feels like it takes some of the passion out of it. That's probably the best way to describe it. When you're cleaning somebody else's car, if they don't show any gratitude, appreciation, or anything like that, then you tend to think, oh, okay, that was a bit meaningless. Because you appreciate your own work, but when somebody else doesn't to you, you're like, oh, okay. So I could have just done a, a bad job and he probably would have said nothing. And that's what it does feel like. And this is where people go wrong because they go, they message me all the time. Oh, I love washing cars, Dave. I want to start a car cleaning business. They start it and a few weeks later, they're like, no, this, is, this isn't fun. I'm not happy. And it is very stressful, by the way. So I think if you go part time, you're going to be more prepared for what's to come because if you have a stable job and then we have a turn, let's just say in the weather, things get colder after September and you're like, oh man, this is, this is awful. This is my first winter. At least you can go back to your full-time job if things don't quite work out. You also need to consider that in the summer months, people tend to be slightly happier. We've got over Christmas because that's a horrible time. In January, we just stop spending money full stop. I do not get anybody over. I think the only thing I pay for in January is a haircut. Apart from that, nothing else. We just shelve everything else because we have to recover from Christmas, pay our tax bill, and then recover. And by the time end of March, April comes along, we get Easter holidays, and we're thinking, okay, the weather's getting better now. We can start cleaning our car. We can enjoy it more. And everybody tends to be a little bit happier in the summer months, me in particular. So I'm sure many of you will be aware that in January, I did a video saying why you shouldn't start a business right now for 2023. That was really aimed at January because January is the worst time to get going. You need to be starting a business where you're gonna get some momentum because as soon as that momentum goes, and like I said, things can come crashing down from one week, it could be high to the next, which is diabolical 
you need to stay quite strong. So that's why I say we need to just get the ball rolling. We need to get some people who are going to spread the word. So yes, you can start a business in the winter, but it is going to be more taxing on the body and on the mind as well. So the reason I say that you should start from March onwards, well, especially right now in July, is because I actually care about your mental health. I think that if you're around happier people in a happy environment and everything seems to be a lot better, especially in the UK right now, then everything just feels like the planets are all aligning and it's almost like as if, yes, I am ready to do this. And trust me, self-confidence would just bloom out of nowhere. And the good thing about the summer months is after you've done your full-time job and you go to do these little jobs in the evenings, you have the perfect conditions. There's nothing worse than trying to clean a car when it's 30 degrees out there. It does happen in the UK. And the sun is beaming, you've got direct sunlight, even in cooler temperatures sometimes. You're just thinking, when is the clouds just gonna come over and protect us? It is so difficult. So from a learner's point of view, you're gonna be working in the best hours. Another thing you must do if you are in full-time employment already is put aside some money so you can get some cheap tools. Definitely don't go splashing out the cash on brand new equipment just yet because you don't know if your heart's gonna be in it. My best advice is look on Facebook, look on eBay, and look for some secondhand deals. Or better still, go buy a refurbished pressure washer, for example. You can go on Clean Store, you can get refurb Nilfisk, Garver, Karcher, you name it. There's plenty of places out there where you can get them which are pretty much brand new or they've had some sort of damage or repair which has been sorted by an actual human being. They're as good as brand new, trust me. I've always lived off refurbished pressure washers. As for chemicals, now you may be tempted to look on eBay at buying 25 litre drums. Now there are some good ones out there, but you've got to check the concentration because I've even done this many times. I've bought 25 litres of shampoo because it was 30 quid as opposed to 25 litres, which was 75 quid. And I look at it and I've, I'm using like half a bottle. If we've got a 500 ml bottle, I'm using half of it of shampoo in a car because it's so watered down. It's just cheap muck. And I think that's the biggest problem. You look at quantities and you go, I have to get that because there's, it looks like it's better value for money, 25 litres over 10 litres. But it's not always the case. Trust me, if you see something with a high concentration that costs a lot more money and you only get five litres, it could be way better off than spending 25 litres on a huge drum of absolute horse piss. Also, you need to talk about pricing. How are you gonna structure this? You are not a full-time detailer. You are basically gonna associate yourself as being a hand car wash. There's no other way to put it. This is how you're gonna get started. You don't necessarily need to start off with machine polishing, decontamination or anything like that. We just want you to learn the skills at this point. Now it doesn't, like this is one thing that bugs me. I had a picture that I had shared from about 12 years ago. There was me with the Ford GT and I had one of those black builders buckets because that's all I could have at the time. And the narky comments I got from people, oh, you're a scratch and shine. I even had a grit guard in it. People judge you on a bloody bucket. It's unreal, this industry. It does get very toxic, but we'll talk about that another day. And my honest advice here is try and ignore the naysayers because you need to do what works. A bucket is a bucket. It doesn't matter whether it's got mayonnaise in it or whether it's one of those builder's buckets, a clean one, or one of those cheapy green one pound Halfords buckets. You have to get started somewhere. And if you haven't got 50 quid to spend on all the fancy stuff, then just don't. It's as simple as that. I started off with all my products came from the pound shop. And that's no word of a lie. I had one pound tire shine. It wasn't very good, but that's all I could afford at the time. So if you're somebody who's just left school and you're saying, right, I want to start a business, but I'm currently working, you know, in a warehouse or something. Unfortunately, unless you've got the money, that's pretty much how you're going to have to start. But you're soon going to realize, OK, I can move on to two pound products or three pound, four pound, five pound and gradually work your way up. So we do need to come up with this plan of action for you because I think offering too much at an early stage is just bad, but it's bad for your mental health, I believe. And the reason that I say that is because you can get very depleted. If you do something wrong and you really do not know what you're doing, then honestly, you'll go, right, that's it, I'm done, I quit, I give up. I'm not doing that again, I'm never doing that again. And I've seen it so many times, it's happened to a lot of my friends, it's happened to me many times as well, and that was my mistake. I tried to come up with all these clever ideas where I could just offer as much as possible. And then I was thinking, well, I've got my driver's license now, I've got a Citroen Saxo, and it's like jammed full with steam cleaners, wet vacs, pressure washers, and literally everything. And I didn't need to carry half this stuff. All people wanted at this point in time was a decent clean, just a good wash and a dry. Even down to the interior, people barely had their cars clean. They just wanted to have a quick flick with a hoover, a hoover, a dust, and a wash. And that was pretty much it. 
I wouldn't necessarily be ashamed of offering those services and you are going to come across some people who go well I expected a bit more as long as you're clear with your pricing and let's just say you've got a bronze a silver and a gold as long as everything is so clearly labeled as to what you're going to offer and because you don't know how long each car is going to take at this stage you have to allocate extra time for four by fours if you've got dirty cars you still need to put on the prices if your car is extra dirty it's going to cost x amount of money extra and this is something you have to face because if you have a flat fee this is where you can come unstuck if you do 30 pound for a quick wash and a vac it's going to be very difficult if somebody says okay i've got a filthy car it's a 4x4 it's a range rover these wheels are going to take forever to clean you're going to be done by the time you finish cleaning that car for 30 quid you're going to think why am i even doing this so there has to be the perfect balance here you have to work out what is the right sum of money to charge how long it's going to take you to clean a car and you have to work out the worst and best case scenarios. So my best advice for anybody who wants to start a part-time side hustle, number one, make sure you love cars to begin with. If you've got no passion in cars whatsoever, this isn't gonna work for you because you, there has to be something there. There's gotta be something that's gonna get you going. Number two, don't rush yourself. Just learn the basics. Don't start jumping onto anything technical until you've mastered the basics. When I say that, I mean, master your washing, for example. Make sure you can clean an entire vehicle without missing a section. Make sure you can dry a vehicle without leaving any smears on it. And make sure you can clean the glass. It's just little simple things like that. And if you're not confident about jumping onto the interior, then just make sure that you get the exterior right for now. There is no pressure on you at this point. This is just a side hustle. This is just you dipping your toe in. Like I said, this is a very volatile industry and a world that we're living in right now. It can go up and down literally in the blink of an eye. One minute you could be very successful and confident. The following day, your energy levels and your soul could just be so depleted because you've had a bad experience. Um, and that's why I just tell people, stop focusing on getting the polishing and the ceramic coatings. Yes, that's where the big money really is with detailing, but you have to get to that level. And this is an interesting way to look at it from my own experience, because this actually happened. I went from somebody who had a pedal bike, a trailer, washing cars, just doing cleans with my one pound chemicals from the pound shop and my buckets. I had a sponge, a chamois lever, all the things you shouldn't have. And I've managed to take it from what it was to cleaning the Bond cars. I clean 14 James Bond cars as it happens. And it just goes to show you that for me to get to that point now, and that was, that was the point when I said, do you know what, I've actually made it because I just stood there and I was like, these are the most expensive, rarest cars in the entire planet. And I was the only person allowed to touch them. I went from that to that. For me, that was just the pivotal moment in my life where I said, okay, Dave, yeah, you've done it. You've done it now. It's time to move on to something else. And that's why I went on to YouTube. But it just goes to show you that as long as you never give up and you've got that passion, one step at a time, you will get there. You're not just going to go from day one going, okay, I've, I've washed a car. Day two, we're going to become mega successful. I've got to the point now where I've stopped doing car cleaning full time. I've knocked it on the head because I'm doing YouTube. I feel that for me and my point in my career, I need to be focusing on less physical work and trying to make as much money as possible from other methods, whether it's selling products, whether it's selling merchandise, whether it's making money through YouTube, whether it's making money on Amazon or through sponsorships or affiliate marketing. There's so many different ways that you can make money as a car cleaner without even cleaning cars. But I'll save that for another day. If you stuck with me till the end, thank you very much. And if you love videos like this, and you want to have a look at some cheap and cheerful products, then I have a dedicated video that you can go and watch right here.